On April 14, 1989, Ramon Salcido went on a murder spree after a night of heavy drinking and snorting cocaine. Intoxicated and out of his mind, Ramon stewed on his obsessive thoughts that his wife was cheating on him with his boss. He murdered a total of seven people, including his own children and wife. In a fit of irrational rage, he took his three young daughters to a landfill, slit their throats, and discarded them like trash. Four-year-old Sofia and one-year-old Teresa bled out. Three-year-old Carmina lay in the field beside her sister's bodies for 36 hours after being slashed across the throat. She was the only survivor. Sadly, his murderous slaughter did not stop there. Showing zero remorse, Ramon continued killing throughout the night. His story is truly one of the most chilling, evil tragedies of the 20th century. In today's story, we will examine the events that led to the innocent lives taken too soon. But before we begin, make sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay connected. Ramon's insecurity in his relationships started at the age of 18 when he married his first wife while living in Mexico. Shortly after their marriage, his wife became pregnant with another man's baby and left Ramon for the real father. After being abandoned, Ramon relocated to California and married his second wife, Deborah. Deborah bore Ramon a child, and when their marriage ended, he conveniently abandoned them. In the mid-1980s, Ramon married his third wife, Angela Richards. The union blessed them with three daughters, Sophia, Carmina, and Teresa, and seemingly, Ramon held a deep affection for them. Of the three, Carmina held a special place as Ramon's favorite. Angela's parents lived close by with her other two younger sisters, eight-year-old Marie and 12-year-old Ruth. In 1987, Ramon held a job as a forklift operator at the local vineyard in Northern California. The vineyard was only seven miles from their home and the bars he would frequent were even closer. Ramon was described as a picture-perfect employee when he first started, but that slowly declined as his marital issues became apparent. Ramon began to call out of work frequently, go to the bar all night long for three to five days a week, and spend money he did not have with credit. Ramon was not particularly fond of his manager Tracy Tuvey. Tracy's supervisor, Kenneth, continually advised Tracy of Ramon's poor performance, and thus, Tracy would issue several written warnings to Ramon. Ramon began to suspect that his wife was having an affair with Tracy and found out that his youngest child was not his. Thursday, April 13, 1989, Ramon is served with child support orders from his second wife, Deborah, at his workplace. Ramon became unhinged. That evening began with a heated argument with his wife, Angela. Leaving the house and seeking solace in a bar, the night took a dark turn as approximately three grams of cocaine were consumed that night along with alcohol. In a deranged state of mind, he described feeling like someone else. Upon returning home, he discovered that his wife had left the house in the middle of the night. Leaving him alone with their children, he experienced a surge of disturbing emotions. Driven by a desire to harm his wife, he snorted more cocaine and, at around five in the morning, embarked on a murderous journey with his children to locate her. Fueled by anger, Ramon's intentions took a sinister turn at approximately 6 a.m. as he drove to a quarry near the county landfill. In a disturbing sequence of events, Ramon, one by one, took each of his daughters to a spot near his parked vehicle, cutting their throats from behind and discarding their lifeless bodies into the creek. It did not end there. Ramon's quest for his wife led him to his in-law's residence, where a horrifying confrontation unfolded. Fueled by a desire to silence those who knew the truth about his youngest daughter, he embarked on a spree of violence. Ramon struck Angela's mother Marion in the back of her head to knock her out. She died of blood loss from a deep wound across her neck. Disturbingly, Angela's sisters, eight-year-old Marie, and 12-year-old Ruth were both found sexually violated with their underwear at their ankles. Bloody handprints were all over their bodies and throats slashed. The sight was truly horrific that their innocent lives were so violently taken. 
The night culminated with Ramon arming himself with a 22 caliber Ruger automatic pistol, loaded with intentions to end both his own life and that of his wife. Armed and blinded by rage, Ramon finds Angela back at their small duplex. The neighbor next door could hear Angela running for her life and gunshots rang through. He shot Angela twice in the head. As she raised her hands, he shot her once in the temple, hit her on the head with the gun, and shot her again in the head. With ill intentions, Ramon, while consuming champagne in his vehicle, made the chilling decision to end the lives of his supervisors, Tracy Tuvey and Kenneth Booty. His sinister plan led him to the winery, where he targeted Tuve, arriving early in anticipation. Flashing his headlights as Tuve pulled in, Ramon approached, announcing his lethal intentions. When Tuve questioned the motive, suspecting a job-related dispute, Ramon's response was cryptic. A series of shots followed, leaving Tuve dead in his car. The journey continued to Booty's residence, where accusations of job theft escalated into a threat on Booty's life. Then he started shooting at him. However, he ran away from Ramon, and a sudden change of heart led Ramon to abandon the plan and head home, refraining from targeting Booty's wife. Subsequently, Ramon reached out to his mother in Los Molquis, Mexico, disclosing the evil crimes he had committed and expressed a desire to end his own life. Her plea to visit her and his sister one last time redirected his path to San Rafael. A stop at a gas station revealed blood on his pants, prompting their removal. A detour to a store resulted in Ramon purchasing new attire, including brown pants and a white t-shirt using his credit card. Later, the FBI was able to trace his purchase to capture him. Abandoning his vehicle with the weapons inside, he proceeded to take a bus to San Francisco. There, he cashed checks from champagne sales, withdrew cash, and embarked on a multi-day bus journey to Los Molquis, Mexico, leaving a trail of bodies in his wake. Around noon on Saturday, April 15, 1989, Ramon's three young daughters were discovered amidst the tall grass at the base of a 15-foot embankment in a field adjacent to the parking lot at Stage Gulch Quarry. This area served both as a quarry and a dump site, situated 6.6 miles from Ramon's residence. The somber scene was witnessed by two quarry employees who stumbled upon the lifeless bodies of Sophia and Teresa. Close by, Carmina was found seated, barely alive, facing her sisters. Carmina endured a significant lateral cut across her throat, spanning from one side of her jawbone to the other, revealing her voice box and partially detaching her tongue. Remarkably, she maintained a seated position, with her chin supported by her chest, for over 30 hours before discovery. During this prolonged period, hunger drove her to consume small pebbles, a desperate act fueled by the harsh circumstances. The positioning of her tongue posed a potential threat, capable of closing her throat and leading to suffocation if she had laid down. Defensive wounds on her hand suggested a valiant struggle for survival. Dehydrated, in shock and teetering on the brink of death, Carmina was rushed to a hospital emergency room in critical condition, where a dedicated team of 20 medical personnel undertook her treatment. In a poignant moment during her transfer between beds in the hospital, she only said, Daddy cut me. She had survived a horrific ordeal, and she went on to write a memoir about it in her adult life. Post-mortem genetic testing confirmed that one-year-old Sophia, not biologically related to Ramon, succumbed to a tragic fate. Sophia and Teresa's demise resulted from the loss of blood caused by significant lateral cuts across their throats, each penetrating to their spine, any one of which could have proven fatal. The quarry's silent surroundings bore witness to the profound tragedy that had unfolded on that sorrowful day. Ramon's murderous rampage came to an end by Mexican police, arresting him near his mother's home at a train station. Mexican authorities followed through with taking him into custody at the request of the United States authorities for extradition. Ramon confessed to authorities all of the crimes he had committed and stated it was because he was jealous of his wife's affair. Ramon was found guilty of six counts of first-degree murder, 
second-degree murder, and premeditated murder. He received the death sentence and later filed an appeal. That appeal was overturned in 2008, and he currently sits on death row. Carmina went on to live with her grandfather, who happened to be out of town that day, and perhaps would have been murdered too. However, too grief-stricken, he decided to give her up for adoption to have a better life, her adoptive family. It is truly hard to fathom how someone could completely massacre a whole family, including their own young children. What are your thoughts on today's story? Let us know in the comments below. As always, like and subscribe for more stories just like this one. Thanks for watching.